Frontiers people in Tennessee and Kentucky and in the big heavy timber. It's interesting to think that when they came out of Nacogdoches that day in early November 1821, when they broke out in the, what they call the harsh prairies of northeast Texas, which are open, rolling country, and you just imagine they must have pulled up their wagons and uh, sat there on their horses for a while and looked in just awe. Oh, here was this space forever in front of them, this rolling prairie with no timber, and they'd been in solid timber all their lives. When he came into Texas, there were a good many Indian tribes here. Uh, of course, the Spanish had been here forever, but not a lot of them. So here we come in in kind of a wagon train, and we come in with livestock. We come in with horses and cows and things like that. And so you can imagine the Indians that were in the timber and the brush watching us come in thinking, you know, what, what, who is this and what is this? Cows and horses and things being brought in, which they had seen very few of in, in their whole lives. So you can imagine what, what trouble it caused for the early settlers when they finally built their log cabins and had their cows around and, and, and those same Indians wanted something to eat and they'd come out and they wanted one of those cows and, and we didn't want to give them one of those cows. And so you can it, it started kind of a difficulty from the very first time we got in here. You have to remember that uh, as we just entered Washington County, which was the first part of Austin's colony, that all, all Spanish land grants, and they, we were all given one, all the families got a league and a labor. A league is 4,478 acres, and a labor is 170 acres. But both of those pieces of ground under Spanish law must touch a stream or a water body, which would be a stream in those days. So it's interesting to think in all the different counties uh, that were in Austin Total 300, how the surveyor was finally able to plot all those different leagues in different places. And, uh, and we're in, right now in Washington County, it is completely planted in, a, in early Spanish leagues, uh, which you can still find at the General Land Office in Texas. And so where we're going today at Washington on Brazos, that first league we're going to go into belonged to Andrew Robinson. And Andrew Robinson preceded us by a couple of days crossing the river. He was the one we hollered at when we got there on the afternoon of the 26th. And, and they were, he and his family and our families got together the next morning and cut down trees there locally and tied them to the wagons and floated our wagons across. But Andrew, and so Andrew Robinson's first league is right there at La Bahia Crossing because he got that because he, 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 he created a ferry. And if you had a ferry, you got a league or an extra league. And if you had a mill, a cotton mill or something like that, you also got an extra league. So he got a league there because he stayed there and, and, and built a ferry. Anyway, so my family got there that afternoon, and uh, Andrew Robinson had just preceded them. Uh, he was over on the other side of the river, and they hollowed one another. And the next morning, they cut some trees down and uh, built a raft, which they did for all the river crossings, and snapped them to the side of the wagons and floated the wagons across, and then the livestock they swam across. And they stayed there a, a day or two. Uh, on December 31st, they have already moved down about 10 or 15 miles to a creek, which on the first day of January, they name it New Year's Creek. And it's just north of Brenham. We're standing on the bridge of, of New Year's Creek. We crossed the, 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 the Brazos River on the evening of the 26th of November and stayed in that area through the end of the year. But the first week or so of January uh, of 1822, our family moved down a few miles from the Brazos River and, and camped and stayed on a creek. Which, and they were there on the first day of January, 1822. And so the family named it New Year's Creek. And we're just northeast of Brenham, Texas, uh, about five or 10 miles out of town. And New Year's Creek is pretty good size. It runs through here and runs down into the Brazos River. Abner signed up and got a, 
a piece of property there, but my bunch moved on down below there uh, in a few weeks on south down the, on to the Colorado River, which was a goodly distance to an area that you know is Columbus, but it was called Beeson's Crossing uh, on the Colorado because in the old days, you could only cross the rivers in that part of Texas where the buffalo had been crossing because the wild cane, C-A-N-E, grew 20 or 30 feet tall and a massive forest of this, of this cane and you could not get through there except where the buffalo had broken their way through over the millenniums. Then in later years, of course, the settlers burned the cane out and reclaimed the land. But in the old days, you could only cross those rivers at those points. Andrew Robinson preceded us by just a few days uh, in early November, and it was he, he was the one we hollered at, he was on this side of the river, on the west side of the Brazos, and he was the one who helped the Kirkendalls and the Gillilands and the Shannons, which were our families, and probably the Gates, who are all are buried here in the area, and he was the one who helped us across. Also, this spot we're standing on here is his league that he got from Stephen F. Austin. This is one of the leagues. They, got a, they get a league and a labor. and had his ferry and he was here for several years and uh, quite historical my first time to be here that I remember so plan B is I'm gonna cross right here over this <laughs> fence and stagger my way down to the Brazos River and get a handful of water a cup full of water in my mouth so I know that I've been here at, 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 at this crossing if you all don't see me anymore it's because I fell in the river that's all I got Shuttle my way down on a grapevine here. here is this pecan tree is not native to this area of two or three hundred years ago but we're on an ancient La Bahia road it came out of Mexico through Matamoros up this way and it hooked up on the on the Comina Real right north of here that goes to Nacogdoches so this 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 these this pecan that grew this tree some, some hundred years ago was brought out of Mexico 900 over 900 years ago and they know that because they've, they've done a tree ring study of it. But they wouldn't 
sh shovel their way through because it's 30 feet tall, they'd find a cut and they'd clean up that what a cut being some sort of an arroyo or something like that, and they would clean that out and make that be the roadbed. But then he stayed here on on his league. Uh, he, he did. He didn't get this league until the summer of 1824. That's when all the leagues were, were offered. But the families camped and built uh, structures, built their log cabins on their leagues long before they got a hold of them.